Hi, I'm Jason Breslow, a reporter for Frontline. So here's a question. How much is a brain worth? That's a question at the heart of a settlement between the NFL and thousands of ex-players who are suing the league over head injuries. And the answer is, it depends. Under the settlement, a player's brain could be worth as much as $5 million, or it could be worth zero. We'll get to why in a minute, but first, a little bit of history. Concussions have always been a part of football, but until pretty recently, there was never much evidence to show that they might lead to long-term brain damage. Then came Steelers legend Mike Webster. In 2002, Webster died, and his death stunned the football world. When an autopsy soon after showed he had a little-known brain disease called CTE, it set the stage for today's legal battle over what the NFL knew and when it knew it. Fast forward to 2013, and that's when a federal judge ordered the two sides in the case into mediation, but negotiators wanted a plan that could work for anyone who ever played in the NFL. The trouble is, no two players are alike. The plan they came up with has come to be known as the grid. Basically, it works by calculating payouts based on three factors. First, how old was the player when he developed a qualifying condition? Second, how serious is the illness? And third, how long did he play? So take Kevin Turner. In 1999, he retired from football after eight seasons. By the time he turned 45, though, Turner had been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. Based on the grid, he'd get the maximum payment of $5 million. Awards start to go down for players diagnosed later in life. And the same goes for someone with a less serious condition or if he played fewer seasons in the league. An 80-year-old with Parkinson's, for example, would get $50,000. It's important to remember that the deal does not include any admission of wrongdoing by the NFL. It also doesn't mean that players could have won their case in court. It just means that both sides were ready to move on. The plan doesn't apply to current players. It does cover dead players, but only if their deaths came after 2005. So take Junior Seau. Two years ago, Seau committed suicide at the age of 43. Soon after his death, researchers found out that just like Mike Webster, Seau suffered from CTE. Under the settlement, Seau's family would be eligible to receive $4 million. Mike Webster's family, on the other hand, won't qualify for anything. That's because he died in 2002, before the eligibility period. By the league's own estimates, nearly one in three ex-players will develop at least one of the brain conditions that are covered by the agreement. Only 60% of those eligible, though, that's about 3,600 people, are expected to file a claim. If the deal is approved, that leaves the NFL on the hook for about $1 billion. That's less than what the NFL earns in a typical season in sponsorships alone.